Don't let the name fool you. It is called the JBL Party Box 310 Portable Bluetooth Speaker, but in reality, What's up, Internet? I'm Brian McDuff, AKA BMAC, and welcome to another video. So today we're reviewing an absolute beast of a Bluetooth speaker. The fact that we're even calling this thing a Bluetooth speaker is still blowing my mind. I've had an absolute blast testing this puppy out over the last couple of weeks in the dog days of summer, and oh boy, <laughs> Do I've got some things to say. Let's just get right into it and start things out by talking about the party box speaker design and how things are looking when you're actually using the Bluetooth speaker. So as you can see, this thing is no joke. It's just over two feet tall. It's about a foot wide and a foot deep and it weighs nearly 40 pounds. In the party box 310, you are getting two six and a half inch woofers and then two two and a half inch tweeters, all of which deliver up to 240 watts of power and can top out at over 100 decibels of loudness. Plus, living up to the name for some added party flair, you are also getting circular RGB lights around the two woofers with some LED lights around the sides of the speaker grill itself, all of which are able to be controlled and toggled with different modes through the dedicated light control button on top. They are responsive to whatever kind of audio you're playing through the speakers, and there are several light show effects and options and combinations to choose from with the ability to even set up your own color combinations or to freestyle the light show from within the companion app. I will say that the lights don't seem to be perfectly in sync with the music that you're listening to, but they do do a pretty good job of putting on a light show and they do light up the place, giving you a party vibe. I just wouldn't say that they're full on gonna be replacing any kind of DJ lighting effects anytime soon. Another design element that I actually noticed that I'm not too sure if it was intentional or just coincidental was the eight and a half inch rail indentation on top of the speaker itself. It makes for the perfect little lip for mounting your connected smartphone or tablet while you're listening. Nice little touch. I liked that. You are also getting a sealed off back compartment with various inputs, outputs, and dedicated controls, but part of that back component being sealed off is because of the IPX4 water resistance rating that this speaker gets, meaning that any kind of splash of water on it is no big deal, so if you're using this by the pool, or if you happen to be using it for an outdoor gig and it starts to rain a little bit, you don't have to worry about it. With the Party Box 310, you could also actually listen to the speaker in either the vertical position, like we have right here, or in the horizontal position. And if you're listening in the horizontal position, whoa! Almost dropped the thing. If you're listening in the horizontal position, you do have four little orange rubberized feet on the side, both on the left side and the right side, so that it's gonna stay put when you're listening in the horizontal position. But I know, elephant in the room, this thing is huge and it's heavy, so how exactly can you call this a portable speaker? Well, luckily, JBL did think of this when they were designing the Party Box 310, so it's important to point out that on top, you do actually get a retractable handle with a built-in handle on the bottom of the speaker itself, alongside two wheels, which makes wheeling around the speaker super easy to be able to do. If it wasn't for that, I basically wouldn't be bringing this speaker anywhere. I wouldn't be lugging this thing around, and at that point, you're basically completely defeating the purpose of a portable Bluetooth speaker. The wheel system definitely isn't quite as stable as I'd like it to be. I actually noticed a few times over the last couple of weeks when I was wheeling this around that it would kind of tip onto its side. I definitely think JBL could have done a slightly better job with the wheel system here, making them a little bit further apart, even if they're an additional two inches apart, because in so doing, you're still not even gonna see the wheels when you're looking at the speaker from straight on. But with all this talk about this being a Bluetooth speaker, we obviously have to talk about the sound quality and how this thing sounds when you're actually listening to it. The sound is actually very balanced with a lot of detail and clarity throughout the entire EQ spectrum, which is pretty impressive considering its loudness and its overall Bluetooth connectivity. Part of that might have to do with the fact that you are getting Bluetooth 5.1 support built in, which is gonna give you a stabler connection and of course a little bit longer range. And even though the speaker is lacking some of those higher end Bluetooth codecs, despite being Bluetooth 5.1, I don't think that actually necessarily translated to any kind of degradation in audio quality. So no aptX codec support here or even AAC support, which I was initially pretty bummed about, but keeping things relative, I probably wouldn't have even noticed that if I didn't go out specifically seeking out the tech spec details because things still do sound really good. Now, even with the bass boost turned off, I did notice a little emphasis to the bass section with a little bit of punchiness out of the box. But in a Bluetooth speaker, you're probably gonna be using outdoors or for party or entertaining situations anyway. I actually consider that somewhat of a feature rather than a drawback. But even then, if you did wanna fine tune and tweak your EQ settings, luckily you do have a three point graphic equalizer built into the JBL Party Box companion app so you can fine tune for even more customized playback. All in all, JBL absolutely killed it as it relates to sound quality with this thing. 
which is why the speaker actually also doubles as a fantastic portable speaker for your vocal and instrumental performance needs as well. Which, speaking of, what are all these connectivity inputs I keep talking about? What are they and how do you actually use them? Like I mentioned earlier, there is a sealed off compartment in the back part of the Bluetooth speaker, which upon opening it up, will reveal two quarter inch audio inputs, one for a microphone and a second one for an additional microphone or a guitar. And yes, this does mean that you could use this speaker with fantastic sounding audio for your music gigs even if it's just a street performance because the whole thing can run off of just battery power. Plus each one of these inputs actually comes with its own gain control knob for fine tuning your overall vocal and instrumental mix. And for vocals, there are even some easy to see and understand backlit buttons on top for adjusting the bass and treble levels, as well as for adjusting reverb echo on top of the speaker itself. Now listen, I'm not much of a singer, but I do play a pretty mean guitar. So I did do my due diligence and sing a little bit and tick -tick 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 play a little guitar into this thing and now I'm actually obsessed with hooking it up to this and making myself what I think sounds pretty darn good. If you're a gig performer or a street performer, you're gonna absolutely love what this speaker provides as it relates to sound quality and for your audio input controls. As if all that wasn't enough, you do also get three dedicated sound effects buttons on the top of the speaker itself, each one able to be customized with one of the pre-supplied sound effects within the JBL Companion app. Little point of criticism here, I do think that you should be allowed to import your own sound effects into the app for use on the speaker because you don't get a huge huge selection of those pre-supplied sound effects to choose from. And as they stand right now, they're kind of novelty, a little corny. I guess if you're at a karaoke party and someone's absolutely killing it and you just want to blast that reggae horn button, I get that. But unless you're in that kind of situation, I suppose there's not a whole heck of a lot of use for those sound effects buttons anyway. At least they're there. I just wish you had a little more control over them. In that back sealed off compartment, you're also going to notice a USB-A port, which actually dips into the speaker's battery to actually allow it to work as a battery bank. Perfect for keeping your connected devices charged up and well, connected. I'm still blown away by the versatility that this thing is providing, not even mentioning the fact that you could connect via a daisy chain connection to other speakers or to another JBL party box speaker through the true wireless stereo pairing. It's mind blowing what this thing is truly capable of. All of which is coming together to make this Bluetooth speaker so much more than just a Bluetooth speaker. But I know what you're probably thinking, how long can you actually expect this Bluetooth speaker to last for? What's the battery life like and how long can you actually be expected to be able to listen to it? I've taken the party box with me multiple places over this past summer to my men's softball league games, listening around the home, listening around outside, and depending on what kind of features I'm using, whether I have the lights on or not, and what kind of volume level I'm set to, I'd say a rough estimate is that I'm able to get a solid 18 plus hours of battery life on a full charge out of this bad boy. Results for you, of course, are gonna vary depending on a lot of different factors, but I'd very much consider this Bluetooth speaker to be fully capable of all day listening. There is also an automatic standby mode where the speaker is gonna automatically turn off after 20 minutes of inactivity, so that saves on battery life right there. And when it comes time to recharging the speaker from zero to 100% using the included AC-DC adapter, I'd say you'll be able to do a full charge in just over three hours. And in case you're wondering, yes, you do get battery level indicators. There's an LED indicator light between the power button and the Bluetooth button on top, alongside also audible alerts that are gonna let you know when the battery level is getting low. But with all that having been said, here are my final thoughts on this behemoth of a Bluetooth speaker and whether or not I think it's the right fit for you. Basically what it comes down to is this. If you want one of the biggest speakers, both in terms of size and in terms of loudness, while at the same time maintaining portability and sound quality, the JBL Partybox 310 is worth every penny. If you're a gig performer or a street performer, usually performing with either a microphone and or a guitar, this thing is like having a mixing board, an amp, and a powered speaker all in one on battery power, which in and of itself also probably makes this speaker for you worth every penny. Personally, in case you couldn't tell, I am absolutely head over heels in love with this thing, despite the few changes that I'd make to make this thing even better than it already is. It still blows my mind that you're getting as much power and sound quality and features packed into this thing as you are for the price point and for it being run on battery power. Don't let the name fool you. It is called the JBL Party Box 310 Portable Bluetooth Speaker, but in reality, it is so much more than just a Bluetooth speaker. It really is like having a party in a box. The name fits. As always, if you guys are interested in checking out the latest deals, prices, and information for the JBL Party Box 310, don't forget to head to my affiliate link, bmac.link slash partybox310, or of course, there's always gonna be a clickable link in the video description box below as well, so check that out. And with that having been said, because this thing quite literally could allow me to take a show on the road, I could literally start tickle, tickle, bam, tickle, ding, do my guitar thing on the road, I might actually start becoming a street performer now. 
Probably not, no one wants to hear me sing. But maybe because of how great this thing makes me sound, it could work out. I will see you guys in my next video.